now the Nakutis family. In the photograph, the mother standing is Borbara uh, Nakutiene, and the, and the children standing next to her are Pranite, Alfonsas, and Grajanute. They were deported to Zulari in Ir Irkutsk Oblast near Lake Baikal. Um, her husband, Yozas Nakutis, was deported 300 miles further uh, to Teishat. Uh, the first letter was, is written by Grajanute, who is a fifth grade student. The letters were sent to Mikolas Nakutis, who was living in Sydney, Australia. Grajanute Nakutita, dear aunt, uncle, and loving sisters, this year I finished fifth grade and entered sixth. Pranita entered fourth grade and Alfonso's third grade. So far we are studying fairly well. It would be extremely difficult for our mother if no one were to help her. We would not be able to go to school because increasingly everything is becoming more expensive, books and clothing. Thank you very much, aunt and uncle, for those warm shoes. They will last me several years so that my feet would be warmer. I put felt into the shoes, much like Siberian felt. Also, our mother has been working on forms for school. She cannot keep up with buying Alfonso's shoes. He runs a lot, and two kilometers from us is a stream. He goes there to swim and fish. You cannot go barefooted because the rocks are sharp and there is broken glass. It would be horrible to get cut. During the summer, mother buys him inexpensive slippers at the market. During the winter, he needs warmer shoes. It is hard for our mother. She does not have a single moment to rest. Barbora Nakutiena, my most dear, we heartfully thank you for the package we received. My daughters say that they would smother you all in kisses, aunt, uncle, and loving sisters, for such incredible shoes. I will knit gloves from the wool, and from the cloth, I will sew several identical dresses for Easter. Thank you so much for those warm shoes that you sent me. However, most regrettably, they are too small for me. My feet have been damaged by the severe cold. I need loose fitting shoes. This pair would have been warm and beautiful. I even broke into tears. Why am I so unfortunate? I will give them to Grajanuta. She was sick twice with pneumonia. She has to avoid becoming cold. Oh, the beauty of the wool. If they were not of one color, I would be able to knit a scarf. I cannot find the words to express my joy and thankfulness for these presents. I say thank you a hundred times over. Every winter's day, we wear Siberian felt shoes. It is very cold. The market is two kilometers away. When there, I usually have to stand and wait. My feet freeze. The school is not far away, a 10 minute walk. Thanks to you, Grajanuta now has warm shoes. She does not need to wear shoes made of felt. Last year, we had a drought. From our vegetable garden, we were able to only grow three cucumbers, and these tasted awful. The potato harvest was very poor. From a quarter acre of land, I could only get six bags of potatoes. The vegetable crop was very poor. What vegetables there are are expensive or are not available. I simply cannot thank you enough for all of your support. Without your help, I do not know how I would have educated my children. Both in the Shukis family letters and in the Nakutis family letters, the need for packages, they were essential for survival. And people survived in Siberia only because of the relatives living in the West sending them support. The Ralis family. In the image, you see Dobelas Ralis with his mother. The letter is written by his sister, Ramune Ralis, to their uncle, V. Tsizanas, living in Patterson, New Jersey. In this letter, she details some of her own life experiences concerning deportation to Siberia. She was attending the seventh grade at the time of deportation. In the Krasnoyarsk district's farm labor camp, Kolkos, the middle school was located two miles away, which she attended until completing grade 10. At that time, she took over the labor tasks of her mother, who was too ill to work. 
The Relis family had been living in Kaunas, where Mr. Relis worked as a bank accountant. In the 1910s and into the 1920s, he wrote general interest magazine articles under the pseudonym Vargo Vaikas, meaning child of misery. This family was deported to serve a six-year term. Now, what kind of work did I do over the past two and a half years? I collected and burned straw, planted corn, weeded wheat fields, collected silage, raked hay, transported logs with a tractor, using horses, transported grains from the combine, cleaned grains, shoveled snow, worked as a camp cook, and so on. In all, I did 167 different jobs. While working as a camp cook outdoors on September 11th, I caught cold and came down with inflammation of my nervous system. I was sick that entire winter. My back and sides hurt very much. It was only during the spring that my health returned. Ramon Ali suffered from viral meningitis. Upon returning to Kaunas, the Relis family was allowed to live in the house that they previously had owned, but only in a portion of the basement. Mr. Relis died within a year of returning to Lithuania. He was 66 years old at the time of deportation. Mindaugas Gadbilas, letters uh, from him. He was deported to the Yakuts region of Siberia, and he wrote many letters to his uncle, Bronis Glevetskas, uh, who was living in London, England. During the war, Mr. Glevaskas had been apprehended and incarcerated in a German concentration camp. It appears that his health was seriously affected during the incarceration, such that when the letters were written, um, Mr. Glevaskas was basically bedridden. In this letter, Mendogas mentions his eight-month-old son, Antonis. Antonis is healthy, he's able to sit, and several teeth are starting to show. As soon as he sees me, he starts to cry and scream until I pick him up and cradle him. Once held, he smiles, gazes at everybody, sings and acts haughty. He's starting to make babbling sounds. This eight-month-old wrote a letter using a crayon to his foreign relative. Dear uncle, I am sending you warmest greetings for the upcoming celebration. With kisses, Antanas. It appears that infants born in Siberia were very precocious. Aldona Gedvilena. In this letter, Aldona Gedvilena is writing to her husband's uncle, Bronis Glevakas, who is living in England. She lists items that she received in a package. Two men's sweaters, one woman's sweater, two pairs men's wool socks, one pair of men's shoes with fur lining, a men's jacket, two pairs of men's gloves, one pair of women's gloves, one thin scarf, two warm scarves, and a woman's wool suit in gray and white colors. Elena Lozoskiene. Elena Lozoskiene is writing from the Yakutsk region of Siberia, searching for her sister, Ona. She had received one letter from Ona three months earlier. She had written to the indicated address on Griffin Park Boulevard in Los Angeles, but received no reply. She was given the address of Bronis Glevakas living in England by a relative of his. In this letter, she is asking for his assistance in locating her sister. Given the massive numbers of deportations, deaths, and the fleeing of individuals from Eastern Europe, very many families were separated. A request which occurs repeatedly in the letters from Siberia is an appeal for assistance in locating relatives. In very many letters from Siberia, there are detailed listings of items that were received in packages sent from abroad. It is clear that there was a constant concern that packages were opened and items removed prior to delivery. Also, very many letters note that promised packages never arrived. For many deported families, survival was possible only because of the packages that were sent by relatives and friends from outside the Soviet Union. Algamantas Kuzma. Algamantas Kuzma was deported to the Krasnoyarsk region of Siberia, and he writes to Uwozis Gaigalas living in Chicago. Dear uncles, aunts, and brothers-in-law, in response to your letter, written on June 1st, I answered it immediately after the death of my mother. 
I enclosed three photographs of the funeral, and I wrote rather superficially about life here. But did you receive the letter? That is not clear. Thus, I do not know whether or to write or not. When I receive word that our letters reach you, I will write about everything. In many letters from Siberia, the dates of letters received and written are carefully recorded so that track could be kept missing, meaning censored, letters. Mr. Kuzma had written a carefully worded letter which was rather superficial, but was censored. The second attempt made it to Chicago, as did at least one more subsequent letter. Everyone who wrote letters from Siberia knew of the censorship and expected their letters to be reviewed. Thus, the content of the vast majority of these letters deal with rather superficial life events and issues. Nevertheless, one can read between the lines and understand the true meaning. Also, some revealing items did slip through the censorship system as these letters from Siberia had revealed.